If you've ever stood in your garden wondering why your compost pile smells off, why your mulch turns slimy instead of fluffy, or why your plants look hungry despite all your efforts, you're not alone. Every gardener has been there. But the Amish, they've quietly mastered something most of us overlook, the perfect balance that fuels their lush living soil and sky-high yields. Their secret doesn't lie in expensive fertilizers or fancy compost bins. It's hidden in three simple letters. CN Ratio. Welcome back to Soil Power, where we dig deep into the real secrets that power thriving gardens. Today, we're unlocking the Amish mulch secret, and I'm going to show you exactly how to use it, with the right ratios, right measurements, and real, repeatable results. What is the CN ratio, and why should you care? Let's start with the basics, but don't tune out, because this one concept separates average soil from truly alive soil. CN ratio stands for carbon to nitrogen ratio, and it describes how much carbon rich or brown and nitrogen rich or green material exists in your mulch, compost, or soil amendments. Think of it as your garden's diet. Carbon is the carbohydrate that feeds microbes slowly, while nitrogen is the protein that helps them grow fast. Get the balance right, and your soil teems with microbial life. Get it wrong, and you choke the system. Literally. When you throw together random yard waste, the CN ratio can swing wildly. Too much nitrogen, like grass clippings or manure, and you get a smelly, soggy mess. Too much carbon, like dry leaves or straw, and decomposition slows to a crawl. The Amish, through generations of observation, hit a microbial sweet spot that most gardeners miss. Their mulch consistently hovers around a 25 to 30 to 1 CN ratio, the range where soil microbes work at their absolute peak. That's why their soil stays crumbly, dark, and full of life year after year. To the Amish, mulch isn't just something that covers soil. It is soil in progress. They build it to feed the living network beneath their crops. Their secret isn't just what they use, but how they combine it. Each layer is carefully chosen to fuel decomposition evenly and feed the soil continuously through the growing season. You'll rarely see bare soil in an Amish garden. Instead, you'll find a thick balanced layer of mulch, straw mixed with green trimmings, sometimes blended with aged manure or kitchen waste, then moistened and turned just enough to breathe. Over time, this balanced mix breaks down quietly, releasing nutrients in sync with plant demand. That's the power of the right CN ratio. Now here's where the real learning begins, the part most guides gloss over. Every organic material has a natural CN ratio. Knowing this helps you build your mulch recipe accurately rather than guessing. Here's a quick reference from practical Amish-style composting. Dry leaves, carbon, 60 to 1 straw, carbon, 80 to 1, sawdust or wood chips, carbon, 400 to 1, grass clippings, nitrogen, 17 to 1, fresh weeds, nitrogen, 20 to 1, kitchen scraps, nitrogen, 20 to 1, aged manure, nitrogen, 15 to 1. The magic is in combining these in proportions that average out to about 25 to 30 to 1. That's the number we're chasing. If you only remember one thing from this video, it's that number. Let's walk through how to actually make it and how to scale it depending on your garden size. Step one is to build your base, which is your carbon layer. Start with your browns, your carbon, shredded dry leaves, straw, or even a small amount of sawdust work beautifully. This is your structure layer. It holds air, absorbs moisture, and gives microbes a slow, steady food source. Use about three parts carbon to every one part nitrogen. For example, you'd use three buckets of shredded leaves or straw and one bucket of grass clippings or kitchen scraps. If you have some aged manure, toss in a half bucket. It's a perfect nitrogen booster that keeps the process balanced. Step two is to adjust the moisture, and honestly this part is crucial. Most gardeners either drown their mulch or starve it of water. The right moisture level feels like a wrung out sponge. If it's too wet, add more carbon or dry material. If it's too dry, sprinkle some water or, even better, you time your FPJ solution, which we'll get to next. Step 3 is the secret ingredient, FPJ, or fermented plant juice. Now we're stepping into real Amish-style biology. FPJ is a natural enzyme tea that accelerates microbial action and adds plant-based nutrients. Here's how to make it. Chop 1 kilogram, or about 2 pounds of lush, fast-growing plant material. Comfrey, nettles or fresh weeds are ideal. 
Mix it with an equal amount of brown sugar, press it into a container and cover it loosely with a breathable lid or cloth. Let it ferment for 5 to 7 days in a warm, shaded area. After a week, strain out the liquid. That's your FPJ concentrate. Store it in a dark bottle. When you're ready to use it, dilute 1 part FPJ to 500 parts water. That's roughly 2 milliliters per liter, or about 2 teaspoons per gallon. Spray this mixture over your mulch or pour it around your plants. This single step is what transforms a pile of mulch into a living, breathing soil factory. How to use it in different garden sizes. Let's make this practical, whether you're growing on a balcony or a backyard homestead. For a small garden, say a 1 square meter or 3 by 3 foot bed, use 3 buckets of dry leaves or straw, 1 bucket of fresh grass or kitchen waste, and an FPJ spray, 2 liters of diluted solution at a 1 to 500 ratio. Spread mulch 2 to 3 inches thick and lightly moisten it with FPJ once a week. Within a month, you'll notice richer soil color and a sweet, earthy smell. For a medium garden, around 10 square meters or a 10 by 10 foot space, use one wheelbarrow of shredded leaves, a half wheelbarrow of green material, and FPJ, 10 liters of water, plus 20 milliliters of FPJ concentrate. Spread it evenly and keep it moist but not soggy. You'll see faster breakdown and more worm activity within two weeks. For a large garden, about 50 square meters or a 20 by 25 foot area, use five wheelbarrows of dry material, two wheelbarrows of green material, and FPJ. 50 liters of water plus 100 milliliters of FPJ concentrate. You can apply FPJ every 10 to 14 days, either by spraying directly on the mulch or as a soil drench. The more consistent you are with moisture and microbial feeding, the faster you'll build deep, healthy soil structure. Testing the ratio yourself, the FPJ growth experiment. If you love a good side-by-side -side test, try this. Take two identical plants, same variety, same soil, same sunlight. Treat one with FPJ made from carbon-rich plants, like older weeds or dried leaves, and the other with FPJ made from nitrogen-rich plants, like comfrey or grass. Keep everything else the same. Within a few weeks you'll notice differences, greener foliage, faster growth, maybe even better fruiting in the balance plant. This experiment shows exactly how the carbon to nitrogen balance fuels plant life, not just mulch decomposition. You'll see what the Amish have known for generations, soil microbes drive everything. Why does this work? Well, it's all about what I like to call the microbial sweet spot. You see microbes are really the engine of your soil, they're the ones making nutrients available to your plants. But, honestly, they're kind of picky eaters. If the carbon to nitrogen ratio is too high, meaning there's too much carbon, they run out of nitrogen and just slow way down. But if it's too low, with too much nitrogen, they overeat, burn out, and you end up with those foul odors nobody wants. Now, when you hit that 25 to 30 to 1 ratio, everything just clicks. Microbes thrive, earthworms start moving in, and your soil structure improves all on its own. That's when you start to see the kind of soil that doesn't even need chemical fertilizers. The kind of soil that practically grows plants for you. The Amish might not use the term CN ratio, but, you know, their generations of observation have really perfected it through practice. They feed the soil, not just the plants. Let's talk about some common mistakes and quick fixes. If your mulch smells bad, it's probably too wet or just too heavy on the nitrogen. In that case, add some dry leaves or straw. If your mulch just sits there and doesn't seem to break down, it's likely too dry or carbon heavy. Just add a bit of green material and a splash of FPJ. If you're seeing weeds poke through, your layer's just too thin. Aim for at least 2 to 3 inches thick. Look, you don't need to chase perfection here, just consistency. Each batch will teach you a little more about your soil's rhythm. Here's what I love about this method. It's simple, sustainable, and honestly, it's scientifically sound. You don't need expensive inputs or any high-tech compost turners, just the right proportions and a bit of patience. The Amish have really shown us that soil health isn't about adding more. It's about balancing better. When your mulch hits that perfect carbon to nitrogen ratio, the soil just takes care of the rest. So, Next time you're out there with your rake and buckets, remember, you're not just piling up organic matter. 
You're actually building a living ecosystem right beneath your feet. Now that you know the Amish mulch secret, you've got the keys to build soil that keeps improving itself. Start small, mix your browns and greens at about 3 to 1, and keep it moist. Feed it with FPJ. Then, just watch the magic unfold in your own garden beds. If this helped you understand soil power on a whole new level, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with a fellow gardener who loves real, living soil. And if you haven't yet, go ahead and subscribe to Soil Power on YouTube for more step-by-step -step practical gardening wisdom that keeps your soil and your harvest thriving naturally. Together let's bring soil back to life, one balanced mulch pile at a time.